Good evening. This is the um, Public Service Committee meeting. It's uh, on November the 9th, the day after election. I am Councilor uh, Peter Tallman. This, to my left is Councilor Will Puello, Ward 2. To my right is Councilor David Bartley, Ward 3. And in the audience here uh, are esteemed leading counselor, Councilor Joe McGivern, that large counselor. Thank you, Joe, for showing up. And this, this meeting is being recorded, it is being taped, and it's live streamed, and it's also on the uh, channel 15. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to take one off the table. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item number one, subject, dear counsel, subject to your approval, I hereby appoint the following individual to serve as a member of the Local Historic Commission for the City of Holyoke. Joseph Charles Mazzella. 332 Pleasant Street. Mr. Mazzola will serve a three-year term. Said term will expire October 1st, 2024. Uh, respectfully submitted, Joshua Garcia, Mayor. Mr. Mazzola, would you like to stop in here? Sit in? Sure. Yeah, we have a mic here. You hit the hit the button, turn green, and... Uh, sit down, put your feet sit up. Sit down, relax you a little tell. bit. That's a, that's your, at your desk. Just yeah. turn the mic on. Candy? Yeah, you want a candy? Yeah. Um, is the mic on? Red light? Green light, got it. Testing, yeah. Okay, there you go. There you go. So we, we're uh, glad you stepped up uh, to serve on this board. Uh, we're just going to ask you a little bit of background, sure. where you live in Holyoke, what made you in, interested in serving on the on, on a board for the city of Holyoke, and uh, just for a couple minutes, and we will have a couple questions for you. Sure. Okay. The button. Hit yeah. the, no, okay. just hit it down. Okay. Let me stay there. Okay. Um, yeah. So my partner and I, we moved from Brooklyn, New York, um, four years ago to Holyoke. Um, he interviewed for some jobs out here, so we decided to move out this way. Um, during the pandemic, we bought our home on Pleasant Street about two years ago. I've enjoyed renovating it and giving it some love. Um, we are also business owners together in Holyoke. We have Paper City Fabrics, which we hope to open on High Street soon. Um, and yeah, as far as wanting to join the Historical Commission, for me, um, with our business, we had a bit of a difficult time trying to find a storefront. Um, we've been in all sorts of buildings, all sorts of storefronts, um, some very rentable, some not. And so, <clears throat> you know, for me, a big thing uh, with wanting to join the Historical Commission was really trying to have a happy medium between economic development and historical preservation. I think that's really important. Um, we have a rich history in this city. There's beautiful buildings, um, but you know they need to be rentable and they need to be saved. Is that okay? Yeah, that's great. That's uh, <laughs> great. Uh, great brief. Um, any counselors? Any questions from anybody on the uh, on the committee? Yeah, I'll do it for you, Pete. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, I, I appreciate you stepping up and, uh, you know, being a business owner, I think, as you stated, uh, you, you see that there's a lot of properties here that, you know, could need some work, um, you know, with the store commission, the local store commission, it's very important that there's a balance, you know, that we have communities, we have buildings that can be saved, and um, we have buildings that uh, need some work, and there's other buildings that are just ready to fall down, and we've had a couple buildings in our community over the years that actually collapsed in the city had ownership of them and had to take care of the, you know, taking them up, taking them down. The cost is very costly. So um, I'm glad that, I mean, coming from Brooklyn, I'm sure you you know a lot about uh, city buildings down there. In, yeah, in my Illinois. father is a, um, was a project manager in New York for about 30 years. So oh, I kind of grew up. <laughs> so you grew up in around the, the yeah. business. Yeah. But I, I appreciate you stepping up, and I'm sure my colleagues will have some questions. And it, you know, it's it's important. I just want to state that to to have some sort of a balance um, with buildings. And then, like I said, it's Holyoke is a, is a very beautiful city that has some really beautiful buildings that uh, you know need to be maintained. And of course, there's a cost to that. So, um, but being on the board, I think it's <clears throat> important that. Uh, you, you see that and that you, you, you get the time to, to be able to make the meetings, you know, whether they're two or three times a month, uh, to put the time in. And I'm sure you can, as being a business owner, you have no set schedule that you can be able to make the meetings. So I, I appreciate that too. Yeah, I guess. Also, Barley? Yeah, uh, Joseph, the, uh, you, didn't bring, you didn't attach a resume here. So did, did you submit one? I did, yes. Okay, I, I didn't. Maybe I we had one. Huh? Maybe maybe I, well. Thank you for doing that because it's not in my packet, so um, it's not imperative. 
but it's it just, just it's just nice for us to see who, sure. who, who, we're, who we're talking to. But it, obviously, I'm going to take your, your word. Um, but because I don't have a resume in front of me, it's, it's hard to ask a, a question or two. But I, I will just say, have you been to any meetings for the Historic Commission? I did sit it on the last, the previous meeting, yes. Okay. What, what's your what's your take? Is it something that you, you think you can get involved in? You, you, you can be you, you can participate, you can speak up, you can yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, weigh in on some things, add some value? Yeah. Okay. I think so. Um, yeah, I mean, Paula has been um, extremely supportive of our business and um, has very much been welcoming in taking me under her wing and um, sending me all sorts of good information to read and prior to sitting in on the meeting. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, it was interesting to prior to coming here to sit in on the process to kind of see what it would be, what it would entail. Um, yeah, and I think I would be very open and willing to share my opinions and comments and all right so this this body here just we just extended the uh, by your we are, we are amended the demo delay from six months to nine months okay so you're aware of that mm -hmm. there, there was there was a, a position taken by some to go to a year but we we, we didn't but we found the happy medium as we generally do we try to split the baby and so that's what that's what we did and sure. so we went with uh, the nine months but which which seems reasonable I um agree. I mean, this board, in my opinion, took an atrocious vote a few years ago. Uh, I didn't vote for it, but um, to, and which ultimately cost the city the Mario De Della Rosa Church. We tried to put an historic district. Some of us voted for it. Some of us voted, you know, didn't vote for it. But you know, we, we needed we needed uh, nine votes to do it, and only got seven. So we weren't really close mm -hmm. um, at the time. But um, but because of that, we lost. Uh, we lost, in my opinion, a you know, a historic treasure, and but we're never going to get it back, and it's going to sit over there as a, uh, as a, as an empty lot. On the other side of the coin, um, I think a really idiotic decision by a former city treasurer had this, the the hotel um, Essex brought from the private sector to the city's uh, balance sheet, and within a short period of time, the building collapsed. Mm. I mean costing the city a, a, a lot of money and there's that. So so th there, there's a line there that I, I, I don't know where the line is mm -hmm. and I don't think you do either, but there's gonna have to be some consideration. At least you did say that you're looking for a happy medium. I mean, I think there's gonna be, you know, that, that's just gonna be imperative and you're gonna have to figure out where the line is. Not Paola, not your, the other commissioners, you're gonna have to figure it out and then, and then you're gonna have to get back to us with uh, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully your input because we we need to hear it now. Not knowing your background other than what you you said and what your dad is, I mean, I, I mean, look, we we can't survive without volunteers. I say it all the time, and we're grateful that you're you're stepping up and you're willing to serve and volunteer. We just had a volunteer come come to serve on a commission, and he, I mean, a he didn't show up to barely any of the meetings, and he quit after a few months. I mean, that that happens, but you know, what are you gonna do? I mean, it's it's a volunteer gig, and, and we get it. Um, but but the but the hope is you'll get some experience and you'll you'll provide, help help us on this board and you'll help the mayor uh, especially but you'll help us to make informed decisions when these these because there is going to happen where these controversial things will come up and we need to get get some input so I I really urge you to uh, you know you obviously you're going to be your own person and and you're going to have to. Uh, you know, there's a learning curve initially. We all know that. You know, you don't want to just jump in and figure out you you know everything. But you know, you'll 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 get the hang of it pretty soon. I'm glad you like. Glad you're here in Holyoke, and I'm glad you're going to be uh, participating in the city. And uh, certainly encourage you to stay in touch with all of us. Okay. So thanks for your help. Thanks for stepping up. Yeah, of course. Thank you. What's that? Council McGuire. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and Joseph, welcome, and thank you for stepping forward. Uh, look forward to uh, watching you serve on the Historic Commission. Thank you. Um, not all councilors agreed with the extending of the demolition delay ordinance that was around for the original one, which was six months, which with the time allotted for the Historic Commission to hold public hearings becomes nine months in itself. Sure. So what was just passed could delay projects for over a year. The reason I bring that up is I was wondering what your thoughts are, you know, at a point where a privately owned building, which is on the historic rolls, and there's a developer who wishes to perhaps take that building down or renovate it or change it dramatically, 
and the city cannot stop that. They can only delay it. Sure. How long does the historic commission delay something, and and what would the would the goals be for delaying a project that might be needed, even though we don't want to lose the historic buildings, but might be needed in the city? How how would you how how are you going to handle and, and weigh the differences or sure. compromise? Well, as I said, I really feel strongly about a um, happy medium between economic development and historical preservation. I think um, there are certain buildings in the city that I think every building is important, but some of them may hold more historical significance than others. Um, I think that does need to be taken into account when it comes to decisions like that. Um, But as a business owner, you know, we are in our city at sort of this crossroads of we need businesses, we need development downtown um, in all over Holyoke. So I think it's a case-by-case scenario um, to answer your question, but again, I would hope that it would be the best use for the building and for the area that the building is located in. Thank you. That's a a more than fair answer, and I appreciate it. And uh, I was going to note that Brooklyn has uh, gone through a a tremendous transition Uh, over the last decade, and uh, I think all for the better, even if you do lose some buildings. But thank you. Yes. All set. Uh, anybody want to take or make a motion? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make a motion uh, that we recommend approval of this nominee to the full city council. I'll second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Joseph, for coming down. We'll Thanks. have a Thanks. meeting next uh, week. We'll bring this forward to the full city council. They'll vote. I don't see any problem. Uh, and uh, then you'll get sworn in, get ready to get to the next meeting. I think she, Paola, mentioned that when you were having the, we were having the next meeting, and I had as soon as I could, but I think there might be something that they need another member for soon. So hopefully we can get you know appointed and then get right on Great. on the board. Okay? Perfect. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thanks, Thanks for you. stepping up. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to remove number two from the table, please. Second. Okay. Dear Honorable City Council, subject to your approval, I hereby appoint the following individual to serve as a commissioner of the Parks and Rec- Recreation for the City of Hoyoke, Jonathan Moquin, Jr., 195 Brown Avenue in Holyoke. Mr. Moquin will replace Nicholas Duclos and will serve his remainder term. Said term will expire June 30th, 2024. Uh, respectfully submitted, Joshua, Joshua A. Garcia, Mayor. Thank you, Jonathan. I see you online here. Um, as we stated earlier, um, if you could give a brief background, we did get your resume today with our packet. Um, and if you uh, give us a briefing on uh, your past, your involvement uh, in the parks or in the city, your involvement in, in, in Holyoke, uh, and, and then we'll ask you a couple questions uh, for this position. All right. Thank you, guys. How you doing? Good. How you doing, Jonathan? Sorry. Not too bad. Sorry I couldn't be there. I got a little caught up at work, and I saw Zoom was an option. But, um, you know, I grew up in Holyoke. I played youth football. Uh, I played football in high school. Uh, I played on all the parks, most of the parks in Holyoke. Um, Right now, you know, most recent, I've done a lot of coaching in Holyoke, Paper City Basketball Club, uh, Holyoke Youth Football, a little bit of baseball, and now soccer with my girls. <clears throat> um, and in doing all of that, I've always had an interest in, in, in doing more, I guess, um, as far as like training and um, maybe some nutrition, just new ways of doing things here in the city to try to develop kids a little better, like, you know, to compete with the surrounding areas. Um, a lot of good ideas I think I have, you know, um, similar to a lot of the coaches in Holyoke. Um, just kind of want to be a voice for the people that are actually putting the work in uh, with the kids. Um, and as far as parks, I'm, I'm just interested in seeing how parks works, you know what I mean? Uh, I know DPW does a lot of the work, obviously maintaining the field, so I kind of want to learn more of the relationship between <clears throat> DPW and um, Park and Rec. And... Um, just want to see more more recreation also in the parks for like families and and you know family nights out just i have a lot of ideas i'd like to see how far we can get and i, I think i'd be a big benefit to uh the city i guess and the youth more than anything i appreciate it thank you jonathan and um i i see your resume and you've been involved and i i think you know firsthand you knowing the fields and and being uh active in sports and, and youth football and playing for high school football and, and coaching now, you know several of the fields. I think most of us 
on this board have been in a lot of fields. And until our last meeting, I think, or a couple of meetings ago, Councillor Bartley stated how many actually parks that we have. Um, it's a little bit higher number than I even thought of. Um, right. and it's, a, it, it's a big amount that has to be taken care of. As you stated, you know, the DPW uh, and the parks try to work together um, to do that, to take care of these fields and maintain them. Of course, when you're down numbers and employees, it's, it's difficult to do that. And, um, you know, I, I agree with you. I think we need more for, for people, for families, uh, for the youth to, to get out in, into some of these beautiful fields and, and parks that, uh, you know, that can be enjoyed by everybody uh, in our community. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's healthy for people to be out, out and about um, for children and for adults. To, to get like as you said you mentioned about training and nutrition and I think that's uh, that's a key uh, our our director has, had brought that up uh, when he interviewed him a few few uh, months ago and um, he seems like he's doing a great job really hands on and uh, really wants to be involved in, in seeing some changes and and making our our parks uh, much better than they are so uh, stay, thanks uh, for stepping up and volunteering this position I know it's uh, it's an important board and um, we look forward to to you serving on it. So, any other uh, counselors? Councilor Bartley? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, Jonathan, this is Councilor Bartley. Uh, how are you, sir? Not too bad. How are you? Okay. Um, so, uh, w one of the one of the things that we're we're really going to count on for the uh, for Park and Rec commissioners is uh, is an open line of communication. So, I, I feel like I have that with uh, with the commissioners that are that are there now. Um, uh, I, I really want to have feedback when we hear things from you. So, you know, I'm not saying you're going to raise your right hand and give your commitment, but I certainly want to, I certainly want to get that, that commitment from you. Uh, furthermore, you realize that we have a, uh, we have a pretty, pretty new department head and uh, he's, he's got some ideas, but of course there's some challenges too. So, I mean, the overall thinking on my end is that you're going to be as supportive as possible, but, um, but I, I heard what you said. We, we, we certainly want to make sure the conditions of our fields and our parks and our amenities, our tennis courts, whatever, our pool, mm. man, oh man, that's just like, that's like a big deal having that pool. Um, and, and, you know, I, I, I had a little pushback with uh, the, the, the party you're, you're, I couldn't believe it, but I did, uh, with, with the party that you're, you're going to be replacing. So there is a very modest and I mean with a capital M modest uh, fee that is due. I said it to the to the gentleman who was here. Would you be okay with that fee? I mean, I think it's five dollars for the year. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I'm not saying we have to be married to that, but his answer was no. Everybody's free. Wow. I mean, just to, just just a pushback right right out of the gate, and, and then now he quits. So, so I had to deal with that. Had had that, uh, you know, agita for uh, for for twenty minutes. Uh, you know, thinking about that. Uh, all I'm saying is that there are a lot of investments that the city has made. There's a lot of great people that work at the pool, work at the park, public works department, works. You know, but you know, we we, we need you to get your your uh, new fresh set of eyes. You know, you're going to be you're going to be the fresh set of eyes looking at stuff. Uh, and I'm not saying the five dollar fee is, uh, although. You know, we waive it for, for, for indigent people. And it's, you know, but I couldn't get it through the gentleman's head. Uh, it was just, no. I mean, come on. So <laughs> he didn't want to dialogue. So I know you're not like that. I just want to say, uh, listen, you know, keep an open mind. You're going to come in with your own take, and your own take is important, but it's going to be based upon not just, uh, it's going to be based upon knowledge, you know, that you've done your due diligence to, to look at the situation at hand. You've been on the parks, you've coached, you know, as I think just everybody here in this room has. So at, at one at one time or another. So uh, so it's just it's just imperative that you you do that. But why don't you just give me your your position on what you see right now as, as a state of the state of our our ball fields at this point, please. I mean. Uh... Off the top of my head, like such as like Lynch, there's a baseball field that's not used. I think we could kind of repurpose Lynch to be more uh, football and soccer, kind of eliminate the baseball field. If, I haven't seen anybody on that field in years. So I'd like to see a little more care for that field, better lines, maybe line it for soccer, line it for football, depending on the season. Um, there's a few others that say like Springdale, my daughters play soccer there. It's hit midfield and we dip down freaking two feet in the middle of the field. Uh, a lot of stuff that I think can be maintained just a little better on our end if you just see it. 
And, and, and back to, I just wanted to hit the, the pool state when you said one of the things I wanted to point out um, with coaching is uh, we've been all over the state with the Paper City basketball team. We've been to facilities and tournaments where we walk into the building and it says park and rec. And, and then we find out that the city itself actually threw the tournament. <clears throat> so, you know, but that's a big, a big opportunity to bring in revenue for our city to keep that the money flowing in for our kids by inviting teams from all over to come into our city and play and pay for concessions, pay for tickets. Um, there's a lot of money to be made. I know it's not about the money, but, you know, you said the $5 problem with the pool and stuff like that. We still do need to bring money in. Um, like you said, there's indigenous people that can't play and all that. But pay for the pool and stuff like that's fine. But we do have to bring money in at the same time. Concessions, tournaments, any option possible, I think. Okay, so just along those lines, uh, uh, certainly the director of the Volleyball Hall of Fame He's told myself and other counselors that, that he wants to get more events, volleyball events in the city. I mean, as you know, uh, Tommy Stewart at the Bartley Center has now got the pickleball courts up and running there. Right. Yep. I mean, this is this is thinking outside the box, okay? This is, and so now they're banging out memberships up there. Um, you, you, you have a private organization like the YMCA running unbelievably great swimming events. I mean, you, you can't believe the crowds they draw from all over this region. I mean, it's, it's amazing. So there's no reason, I mean, so the energy is there to come to Holyoke and have youth sports be involved. We got some, you know, we're gonna have, as, as Councilor McGivern and I and a few others kind of worked on, uh, we're gonna have uh, an updated ball field where uh, behind Holyoke High at Roberts Field, or where, what are we calling it, Roberts Field? Robert. Okay, okay, so, that, so, so we, know that, we know that's gonna get uh, some upgrades soon. So we're, we're, we're looking forward to, to that. Well, yeah, more tournaments there would be, uh, would be exciting. Uh, one thing I just want to ask, and I, I won't go on much longer, but uh, one of the things that was very special uh, growing up in Holyoke, as I did, is uh, to have the ability to play uh, basketball at night in certain gyms. So that was always kind of a special thing, whether it was, um, you know, Lynch or Met, wherever I played. Well, we, we, I don't have to list all the names. We, we know all the names. But Morgan Metcalf. Uh, all those, all those. It was just, it just it was fun. Yeah. You know, Dunhue yeah. and, and that, that, yeah. those horrible courts there. But I'm just saying, uh, slippery, slippery courts. Uh, but it, it, it's just something that I, I want to encourage more, that we want to get more youth doing, you know, whatever the sports that I play, the quote-unquote traditional ones, the non-traditional ones, like pickleball, which is a growing, a growing sport. And we have a pickleball court line set up um, at the new courts on Crozier and Jones Point for sure, because I've seen them. I don't know about the ones at the high school, but because uh, I haven't been on those courts, but I'm, I'm sure that the lines are there too. So, I mean, it's out there. I mean, so we have, and then, and then you, 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 you look, you know, you look at all the sports, Look at all the softball teams that we have. I mean, going they're, they're over there. I don't know if they're over there like now, but they're over there to like to the snow flies on uh, at McKenzie or you know John Young's John Young Stadium. So I mean, the energy is there to, and but though I realize those are adults, but but I'm just saying they learn the game somewhere, which probably is kids. Um, uh, so I mean, we really need more youth activity. But I I'd, I'd like to start with you know getting basketball. As, as many courts as we can open at night, and I realize it takes money. You know, we all know that, um, but that, that's something I'd like to have you um, consider working on as part of a, you know, being a commissioner. I mean, it's it's kind of a big. It, this is again, it's a volunteer board, but to me, this is one of our most important boards that we have in, in the city. That you're going to be a commissioner of the Park and Rec Department. That's pretty good. Um, um, you get to be called Mr. Commissioner. You know, right, I, I that's mean, nice. that's, I, I'm just saying it's real nice. I mean, it doesn't come with any money, but I tell you, it's, it comes with a nice yeah. title. So it's just something you gotta, you, you gotta really respect, and you're, you're gonna gain respect on that too. But I, I just certainly want you to, I want to emphasize that we we need your take on it. Uh, we need you to support Tom, and we need you to support our city parks and our public works department. But you know, go at it your own way, your own style, but in a supportive way. And I think we can all. You know, have the sea of the boats rise higher. You know, so I I think that'll be. Uh, oh, and what about um, geez, Pete? What about uh, handball? The, the Pete was in, the handball courts on uh, 
on, on Canal. Oh, yeah. My God, some guy on Channel 4 is calling it Canal. I mean, I, I couldn't believe it. I, I just can't believe it. But uh, whatever. Uh, but I, I cannot, the Campbell Court's there. I mean, that. that well, I think they have them too. That, that, and then and what about the kayaking we have over there in the. And, and Jones, uh, Jones, I mean, we just got some stuff. We got some diversity as far as activities. Yeah. Jonathan. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm just saying, I mean, you, you know these things, but you don't know them, know them until you get your, you get your fingers on, on, mm -hmm. on, on the steering wheel. So it's just kind of important for you to know that and then get back to us with, uh, with your take. Uh, just really key. Thank you. You all set? Yeah, Hello. thanks, Mr. Chairman. Just a quick comment. I mean, I just want to thank Jonathan for stepping up. I've spoken to him here and there. And, uh, I mean, look at the, the community experience. In 20, since 2017, he's been coaching, so I, I know his heart's in it. And um, if none of my other colleagues, I'll, I'll leave it to them, but I'd like to make the motion to recommend. Okay. Uh, Councilor McGivern. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Jonathan, just to echo that, too, we appreciate you coming forward. Uh, your comments tonight show that you have a knowledge of our field, a knowledge of what Parks and Rec is about and uh, greatly appreciate your enthusiasm. Um, one, one thought about, I agree with you about uh, Lynch School, about the Anniversary Park, about football and soccer being more dedicated towards that. But we need the 90-foot baseball diamonds in Hoyoke. You know, we're, we're actually short on them the time of year. When and it's a very brief season for that age level and, uh, of uh, baseball itself. But we, we, to replace that 90-foot, we'd have to put it somewhere else which is part of state rules and laws that are, I'm not always sure I agree with them, but it's something just to keep in mind. But I'm gonna leave you with one thought. The one thing between you and Councillor Bartley we haven't talked about this evening is ice skating rinks. You know, right. winter comes, we know the kids that wanna play basketball, volleyball, we know the kids that will play indoors, play any sport, team sport in the world. We need to get back to ice skating rinks because that's for kids who just want to go out and skate around and be with their friends. And we used to do a, a great job of it across the city, but I know it's expensive and I know it comes down to manpower, but something to think about. Are you saying like outdoor ice skating? Out outdoor, yes. Nice, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah. Thank you and good luck. Thank you, I appreciate it, guys. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll second that motion. Okay. I think, I think Mr. Poyle made a motion. Will you add a motion? Yeah, yeah if, if you're all set. Okay. I, I second the motion that we... Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you, uh, Jonathan. Uh, we'll bring thank this you forward. Have you have a good night. We'll bring Lord it forward friend. to the full council next uh, Tuesday evening, okay? Appreciate Thanks it. A lot. Thanks later. for stepping up. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Chair, can I just suspend the rules and take four out of order? I just want to make up ever so brief comment on, on four. Okay, suspend the rules. I have number four. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, you want the uh, the minute? You would all of them? Or you want to... Yeah, just to give, just just tell what the order is. A brief, a brief reading. Okay, we do. You want me to read them? No, 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 no. Don't read the minutes. Okay. No, please okay. don't. Just, okay. just just say what the what the order is. And okay, um, item number four, which is uh, oh, so you want okay from the Board of Appeals regular and public hearing minutes of July twenty sixth, August twenty first, twenty eighteen, and October twenty eighth, November eighteenth, twenty twenty one, public. Hearing minutes for Kevin Flynn, Five Linder Heights, from July 26th, August 21st, and September 19th, 2018. Public hearing minutes for David Urbanski, 53 Roland Street, from October 28th and November 18th, 2021. And public hearing minutes for Patrick Sullivan, 555 West Cherry Street, for July 26th and August 21st, 2018. Yeah, and now th th this is... Uh uh, th this is something I, I asked for, and, and so we have the we have the meeting minutes, and so I've I've gone through these minutes, and um, and I have no interest in, in debating any of the merits of the of the votes. That's not why I got them. I just a I want to see what the minutes are, and now we're going to get them going forward. I just want to point out to the chair, um, if uh, I'm just saying. I have I have meeting minutes here, where the um, where two members show up. And I, first, I have meeting minutes here where there's multiple meetings starting starting at the at the same time, some adjourning in the middle of another meeting. It's just a bizarre layout the way these meetings are. I'll just give you a small example. August twenty first. 
There's two meetings going on at August 21st at 5 o'clock, 2018. One of the meeting starts at 5, adjourns at 5.49. Another meeting, the same day, a meeting starts at 5.05 and, and adjourns at 5.07. That, that, that makes no sense. I, I have meetings that, Mr. Chair, that, that are a, a, a quorum when there's two members there. They, the, the chair is saying that there's, there's, no, there's no quorum. Well, of course there's a quorum. When there's a three-member board, you get two members there, there's a, there's a quorum. But, but the chair is saying there, there's no, no quorum, so it's, it's adjourned. I, 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 I have, I have and, and the, the, the minutes of itself, I, I guess, you know, you, you, I'm not blaming anybody, but I, I, have, I have meeting minutes that look like they consistently, they're, 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 they're sent to me from 2018, and then there was a few meetings in 2018, the last one September, and then the next meeting minute I have is October 28th, 2021. So I, I so there's nothing in 2019, that's impossible, 2019, 2020, and the balance of 2021. I mean, so I am as, I'm just baffled by, and I asked Jeff, our Jeff, to, to, to sort of, you know, talk to the, the planning department head, and that was. I just wanted to get a sense of, uh, of, of this board. Uh, you know, I, I'm just. You know, the, the merits are the merits. I'm not here to debate that. Whatever was argued there is argued. That that's for the that's for history. Uh, but I, I get, I, I, you know, reading this stuff. I, I didn't know I was going to get so confused by have meetings starting at the same time and ending and ending. Before, you know, meetings running simultaneously. It's just I think the way th these minutes are written could be improved. Uh, I think I think w when when there's a person as a chair and saying there's a two people are showing up and saying that they don't have a quorum, I think that's a problem. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm not I'm not getting it. Um, and there's other people in the room too, including a lawyer who is in the apparently in the room. Uh, a, a lawyer is in the room saying, uh, you know. The, the chair stated that due to lack of quorum, the public hearing would be continued. Well, there's two members there. I mean, it it, it doesn't make sense. Um, so, so there, there's a, there's a little bit of training that has to be done on on that. Um, so, I, I'm not really interested in in talking about this stuff anymore. I I, I said what I said. Appreciate the chair's patience. Uh, my my hope is that we'll we'll get these meetings sent to us minutes sent to us a little regular, and, and then we can understand. What, what what goes on a little bit better for for this board? Okay, so I'll just make a motion that we receive uh, four. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I'll make a motion take three off the table. Second. Okay. Okay. Item number three is, uh, dear council members, subject to your approval, I hereby reappoint the following individual to serve as a member of the board of appeals for the city of Holyoke, Mr. Josh Knox, 40 Morgan Street, Holyoke, Mass. Uh, Mr. Knox will serve a three-year term. Said term will expire on July 1st, 2025. Respectfully submitted, Joshua A. Garcia, Mayor. Good evening, Josh. If uh, you could, uh, even though it's sort of reappointment, if you could sort of uh, give us a little briefing of your, your history, your time in Holyoke, and uh, why you want to continue to serve on this board. Good evening. Thank you for having me. I'll start the same way I always do when addressing council, which is uh, with appreciation. I appreciate y'all for serving. I know you're not volunteering like we are on, on the boards, but y'all don't get paid all that very much and spend a lot of hours sorting through tedious matters. So I appreciate it, thank you. Um, I've been in Holyoke for a little over a dozen years. Um, live over on Morgan Street, so have served the city in whatever way the mayor wants me to to serve. I've served on the Conservation Commission for a couple terms. Uh, I serve as warden uh, for the elections. Busy night last night. Uh, and I've been on the Board of Appeals ever since uh, the mayor wanted me to serve there. So um, basically I'm, I'm willing to do my part as a citizen of the city and, and serve where I'm asked. Okay, Josh, thank you. Uh, any Comments, questions? Anybody? Uh, anybody? Uh, committee members or no? no. Josh, uh, this this position um, we we received the minutes of the meetings. I we, we normally don't get. Then Councilor Barley asked, and um, we normally don't 
haven't been getting them. Um, is there a problem with them recording them and getting to us on a regular basis? Because we get them for the parks, fire department, um, all the different, mostly the different, uh, almost majority of the uh, commissions, uh, the city of Hoyoke. So, and it's something that we never really got and never really got a chance to look at. I mean, we can't really get to see every meeting that's going on because of our own meetings. So, uh, is there a way that we can get these um, on a regular basis? Thank you, Councilor, for the question. I, I imagine there are. We rely on, on the board with the staff, the planning department staff. So, talking to Jeff or Sharon about that, I'm, I'm sure they can help you out. Okay. And and the, as Councilor Bradley brought up, um, if you you have three members now on the board, you and two others, Correct. or just you. Okay, and Mr. We just had an appointment, I think, Mr. Partee, is it? Yeah. Right. Recently. Yeah. Now, who's the yeah. other member? Who's the other member? Um, that's an excellent question. Uh, it's Mary. I'm not remembering her last name right now. Well, we have a Mary Monahan. Mary Monahan. Is she on the DPW? Or? I assume she's still a member, but I don't know if, if that's true. Mary yeah, Monahan? Mary Monahan. That, that's her last name, yes. So she's still on the on the board? As far as I know, no one's told me she isn't. Okay, because she, she's on the... D DPW. DPW. Right? She, she, she's a DPW commissioner now, Mr. Chair. You can uh, be on two? I, I, I think you can serve on more, more than one board. board. I, be, I believe mm -hmm. you can. Okay. Yeah, well, I was just wondering, because I, I know it's on the latest one uh, uh, on that. Um, and it, it, if you, a couple of the minutes, uh, it said if you have two members, yeah, the three, that's considered a quorum, right? I believe the meetings in question were... Uh, uh, a meeting where we had already met once, and so if we didn't have all three members, that was going to be an issue. Uh, we were advised by staff in terms of um, needing to have all three people be at every hearing for a particular issue. So I think that was the issue. Okay, you mean consistently uh, they have to hear it out for each, uh, even though three members, two is considered a quorum. Just like us. But I believe there are some issues with state law. If, if you start a meeting and you have three members and then you have a meeting where one of the members is absent, uh, there's an issue about whether they can then vote in the end um, on the matter. And so we were advised by staff to continue the meeting because one of the three were not able to attend. Um, as we're talking about this, I, I, I do want to point out we could use some associate members which would help actually with that issue. Uh, I know the mayor is doing what he can to recruit more members. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else that council can do to send more, more members our way, but um, because the associate members can uh, support us in situations like that and not have to, you know, we never like to have people show up and, and not be able to meet. Uh, it's true for staff, it's true for um, board members, it's certainly true for members of the public. Um, so uh, that would be something that would be helpful if we actually had one or two associate members who could uh, step up in times like that. Okay, that's, uh, that's good to know. Councilor Barley. Yeah, just on that point, uh, Mr. Chair, I did see in the minutes, there. I think there was some talk there were, I know there's some talk of discussion in the meeting minutes about getting a fourth and a fifth member, but but that's going to have to be either subject to city ordinance or state law. I don't really know what the what the pr provisions are regarding that, but to, to have additional parties there, so that doesn't happen. Um, I I can say that if if there's anything, I mean there's nothing in the minutes relative to, and, and it would have been helpful. And, and I, I do recall that that is probably an accurate statement that the chairman just said that if you're not there you you have but but all it says is lack of a quorum and so to to the to the reader yeah, it uh, it's 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 completely devoid of of context when you just say lack of a quorum and it's the chairman signing these meeting minutes so because there's a signature right there so i'm just saying uh that that could be done a little a little bit better you know you've been doing this for more than a minute and again uh we we always appreciate volunteers there's no question we we appreciate volunteers, so I'm not, I'm not criticizing. I'm just, I'm just. It's not a personal attack. It's just a fact that we're, you know, now that we've asked for these meeting meeting minutes. Well, just, just like the chair knows, we never got public works meeting minutes until I brought it up. Right, yeah. So, so now, so now, 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 we're, now we're getting them, and so I think that's, you know, if there's, 
there's not too many boards that are more important uh, for us. So, uh, so at least that, at least there's there's that. So I don't see any reason why we can't get our meeting minutes for for this because you know you're an avid reader of them, so am I. So yeah, I I, I appreciate that, uh, Councilor, and, and 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 thanks, Josh, for letting us know that because the way it looked is all. There's two people there, but I don't understand that, you know, I can see how people have to be there throughout each hearing uh, so they can vote on it. So, um, but that's important. Um, but if you can continue to, to get those minutes. Now, who, who actually does the minutes? Do you do the minutes or does somebody, a secretary? It's or staff, yeah. yeah. It's the staff? Sharon and staff, yeah. Okay, okay. And how, how often do you normally meet? Council Bartley mentioned, you know, that it was impossible that we never met in 2019, but in fact, we did not meet in 2019. Uh, that's my recollection. It could be we had we had a meeting just to have a meeting because that's a good idea, but we only meet when um, folks appeal, uh, you know, appeal. submit an appeal, and, and there aren't that many appeals that get submitted. So um, our our meetings are, are as needed. Uh, Mr. Chair. Councilor Barley? Yeah, let me let me just say I, I I realize anything's possible, but when when you read the last meeting minutes from from September nineteenth, twenty eighteen, when the chair is asked for a motion to close a public hearing, and a motion is made by Mary Monahan and seconded by another commissioner, and the hearing is closed three nothing, and that was on September nineteenth, twenty eighteen. So there was an open matter, and the next meeting minute is. October 28th, 2021, over three years later, and on a totally different topic. So when I say it's impossible, I'm not saying it's like, you know, they can't ever meet, but I'm saying you had a meeting and it just, you know, there, there's no vote. There's no, there's no vote to end this. So they close the public hearing and there's no conclusion to the matter. And that's not the only one. So I'm, I mean, it's, it's, it's confusing. I think just, you know, Go back and read the main minutes. Anybody can now that they're now that we're, they're available, and you can read it for yourself. So uh, um, I, I think a little better work can be done there. My opinion. Councilor McGivern. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Josh. Thank you for uh, for serving. This is a important board. It doesn't get in the limelight very often, and, and I can see where you know we not so much confusion, but. You know, where minutes, you know, are, are important. You know, that they could send a confusing message, but your answers uh, cleared that up. I'll, I'll, I'll be glad to talk to the uh, to the planning department. Um, I think the person doing the minutes is no longer with them, and I'm looking at you know what the timeline looks like in the minutes are the openings of the different public hearings, and you really don't have to you have to cite that, and we know that because we do it here. But the meeting itself is one meeting, not multiple meetings. But like Councillor Bartley said, when you read minutes, it looks like there's more than one meeting going on. Um, and, and you, you know, I, I like the minutes because, and as you know, um, a lot of people don't, is that any petitioner that files an appeal has to first prove a hardship. Um, you know, the Board of Appeals cannot change something just because they think it's a good idea. There has to be a hardship under, under state law, a hardship proven, you know, to the Board of Appeals. It's not an easy job, and I appreciate what you do. And uh, hopefully, we can get some uh, some minutes from the Board of Appeals and uh, and work it out with them. But thank you, and uh, good to see you. You're welcome. Likewise, thank you, Council. Yeah, I'll just make a motion to forward this nominee to to the full City Council. One second. Okay. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, Josh, for coming down. We're going to forward this uh, to to the full City Council next Tuesday night and have a vote on it. And uh, thanks for uh, the work you do for the city. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Thank you you welcome. have a good night. Thank you, Councilor. Yeah, have thank you. Night. Have a good night. Pete, let me say motion. the magic words. Yeah. Oh, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Aye. Thank Thanks. you, gentlemen.